That was Bach. And that's it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. And we'll see you to... No, I'm joking, of course. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is going to be a very, very different kind of concept. Tonight, tonight is going to be a psychological experiment. And nothing more than that. So, if you have come this evening expecting note perfect, melodically and contrapuntally perfect Bach played on the most amazing organ in the world, then I suggest you leave now. Because definitely not what's on the program for tonight. What's on the program is me trying to play Bach. And there's a reason for that. And um, throughout the evening, I will tell you about my um, reasoning for doing this concert in the first place. And then also why I have chosen the pieces I have chosen and why I don't normally do this kind of thing. So anyway, 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 anyway. Tonight we're going to talk about and we're going to play some of the wonderful music of Johann Sebastian Bach. And to add to the pressure, none other than Johann Sebastian Bach is in the audience tonight, as you can see, <laughs> which is wonderful. So, buona sera, Johann Sebastian Bach. Nice of you to join us. Schön, dass du da bist. And uh, yes, I hope you enjoy my little stories tonight and my pieces of music that I have chosen. Now, while I was putting this program together, I sort of thought, what on earth can I possibly do? I know I will learn one of the big pieces of Bach for this concert. Uh, that was about six weeks ago. And in those six weeks, I managed half of the first part of that piece that I wanted to learn. Half of the first part of that piece that I wanted to learn. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's how difficult these things are for me. Now, this is all, it's very personal tonight. It's a very personal um, concert, okay? So bear with me, bear with me. There's gonna be some sight reading as well so I can demonstrate things to you, but I've chosen a number of Bach pieces to play for the simple reason that there are various different kinds of Bach organ music, um, most of which is very well known by organists around the world, and none of it is played by me. <laughs> and this is a thing. This is sort of a theme that's sort of been following me through my life, um, the music of J.S. Bach. I have had quarrels, fights, in fact, um, uh, almost physical fights with organ teachers, about the music of Bach and my playing thereof. And uh, now as I approach 50, um, you know, I'm slowly getting to grips with the music by myself. And um, the, the music itself is wonderful. I love listening to it. I love listening to other people performing it. Mwah, wonderful. But it's just when I physically sit down at the organ and try playing it, something inside my little brain goes, oh. Reen? Ah, a little reward for my courage, said Reen. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Colonel Ryan. You're exactly right. Um, by the way, Colonel Ryan, our friend Reen Schalkweig, has been very, very helpful in putting together tonight's concert. So more on that coming up soon. I started, by the way, I started with a piece of music that is so over the top. Uh, it's very short. Herr Jesu Christ, dich zu uns wend. And that's sort of a very sort of flourishing um, Bach chorale. That's the way Bach would have played the organ in the church. Bach, let's not forget, Johann Sebastian Bach, you're there, you can confirm it for me. Um, Johann Sebastian Bach was a big show-off. Uh, he was an exceptionally talented organist, exceptionally large hands, exceptionally talented in all things, and he would regularly really show off in the organ to show people how amazing his technique was. And that... Um, to me, to me, I hear no difference in the, that music there to the music of Max Reger, for example. The harmonies that Bach has at the end, the end harmonies, where was I? What, what registration did I have there? Something very loud, anyway. Um, the end, the last two bars of this piece, I'll play it very slowly. In fact, no, I won't. I'll play it softly so you can hear what's going on. Listen to the harmonies involved here.
incredibly modern and harmonically ah over the top it could be max rega doing that kind of thing it's wonderful and this is what bach was up to during his lifetime johann sebastian bach was born either on the 21st of march or the 31st of march depending on which time system you go by in the year 1685 um, there was sort of the new time and the old time, yeah, sort of the, the changed calendars round about that time. So it depends what calendar you're going on. So it's either 21st of March or 31st of March. But 1685 was definitely the year, and he lived until 1750. He was employed by various toffs around the German mainland for most of his life and made most of his money. He made quite a lot of money for a while. He was practically bankrupt at one point in his life as well, but he did make quite a decent amount of money during his lifetime. Um, and um, like I said, working for one of, you know, the odd toff, the odd prince, the odd duke, whatever they were in those days. And, um, and over the years, of course, furthered his um, skills, made himself, you know, he was constantly learning, constantly learning. He was very influential in the musical world without Bach, we would not have the modern system of um, temperament. And I don't mean psychological temperament, I mean scales and temperament. So, for example, it's possible to play any piece in any key on a keyboard. That wasn't possible before. Things were tuned in a certain way that only certain keys sounded nice. Bach thought, sod that, and helped. He didn't do it himself, but he helped and worked with people to work out a way to tune keyboard instruments so that they could be played in any key at any time. And of course, this enabled Bach then to take pieces like that and transpose them all over the place. And people thought this was amazing and wonderful. Um, a long time ago, there was a conspiracy theory that Bach was actually a time traveler. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Cameron Platz. Is it true that Bach composed some of her works to test the lung? Yes, that is very true, to test the capabilities of the organ. That's very true. Um, Bach was a kind of an organ consultant. Why am I wearing headphones? He was kind of an organ consultant for a while. And when new instruments were being installed in churches or being presented, then of course you had to have the great Johann Sebastian Bach to come and demonstrate it. And oftentimes he would sit down at the organ and he would play full organ, he would play as many notes as possible, as quickly as possible, he would try to break the organ basically, he would try to show the organ builders that their organ was crap and they needed to, you know, work harder, get better bellows, have more people pushing, pressing the bellows, you know, pumping the bellows. Um, and yes, Bach was, um, we'll get to that later as well, Bach was a musical genius, but he was not a very nice person and we'll get to that later. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, Bach chorales, chorales. Um, let's just play this one. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of music, absolutely delightful. And the organ I'm using this evening, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the organ in the Markt Kirche in Groningen, Groningen, up in the north of Holland. And this was sampled for help work by Sonus Paradisi. It's an absolutely beautiful instrument. I think it's possibly the best sounding. Certainly Baroque organ for Hauptwerk, well certainly that I have, but it's just, it's absolutely delicious. You, you, um, I've set it up in such a way, it sounds like you are sitting at the console with the organ all around you doing its thing. It's crazy. Go and get headphones, go and get decent speakers, sit down and really enjoy yourselves. Is the microphone making funny noises again? Yeah, I'm pulling off that sound. Oh dear, okay. Is that on properly then? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Hold on. Okay, is that any better? Uh, I've just changed this, is that any better? It's entirely possible that my fat stomach is in the way um, of the, uh, of the um, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the um, transmitter from there. Is that better, any better? Let me know if that's better, people, people. Is that better? Cameron says yes, right, that's good, that's good enough for me. Okay, something was wrong there then, obviously a cable. Okay. Cassie says, genau das ist der Fehler. That's not a very nice thing to say, Cassie. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, okay, right. Um, a Bach Choral, rather beautifully played, well, not beautifully played, beautifully composed, sorry, but um, sounding or rather beautiful on this instrument. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to choose random stops. 
Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Uh, do we need anything down there? I don't think we do actually. So let's take that. Actually, no, let's do something else. Let's take that. We'll add a tremulant because it's a Dutch organ. You need a tremulant for a Dutch organ. And I think we'll do that as well. Let's see what this sounds like then. Liebster Jesu, wir sind hier. For two manuals and pedals. That's what it says. Uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. That was BWV731. We started with 726. Yes. 726. That was 731. Someone's writing all this down for posterity. A big pun? Auch auf Deutsch. My God, Leute, was wollt ihr denn alle heute Abend? Ach, that, that's her. Yeah, all right. Also, heute Abend, with a line, and ich feuer nicht an mit so kleinen Flaggen. Oh. Okay. <laughs> There's going to be trouble tonight. Um, my nerves are close to snapping tonight. <laughs> um, it's going to be one of those nights. But yes, it is. Thank you. Mike King, that was lovely. Yes, it is. It's lovely music. But the concentration involved is frightening. This is water, by the way. <clears throat> at some point, there will be probably, actually, a cup of tea would be nice at some point. Yes, we'll have a nice cup of tea at some point. That would be good. Now, J.S. Bach. A wonderful, wonderful guy, of course. I think we'll do that one later. Let's do another one first. I've, I've got one. How many? Got? I've got four books of the Bach music here. And I might actually, I might actually, yes, play something fast. Neville Palmer, you just wait. <laughs> you just wait. There will be some fast things coming. Um, I'm not too sure what, but there will be some fast things coming. Let me see. 
Let me do the first piece of music I ever had to learn from Bach. And this is, I actually forgot, believe it or not, I forgot that I had to learn this. Is this right? Yes. Um, I actually forgot that I had to learn this when I was young. And I learned it again a few months ago, thinking there's something in my brain that tells me I've played this before. Where is it? Why can't I find it? Oh, damn it. Is it not in this book? It should be. Where is it? Uh-oh. Why not in the right book? Hello? There it is. I knew it was here. Um, and this was something apparently I learned when I was about 17. About 17. That's why I forgot about it, because it's so long ago. It's Bach's Little Fugue in G minor. And this is one of the first sort of bigger pieces that people learn when they, uh, when they, when they, when they study Bach. Let's just go for 8, 4, and 2. Uh, we'll do that. We'll couple everything together to make it sound nice. We'll have a bit of blub on the... No, actually, we'll have that on the pedals. That probably sounds quite nice. Yeah, nothing too loud for this. Nothing loud. We'll do the loud stuff later. That's coming. Um, and I remember my organ teacher saying to me, right, you want to learn the organ, you have to learn Bach. Now, up to that point, and this is important, up to that point, I had been playing piano at home. I had been... Um, Someone's asking, why did they play Bach C minor after the funeral of the Queen? That's a very good question, WB, because it's a well-known fact that Her Majesty the Queen did not particularly like Bach's organ music. Um, so a lot of people were playing Bach pieces for the Queen's funeral or around the Queen's funeral, and uh, the Queen herself was not a fan. I have a feeling, though, um, because Prince Philip was a fan of Bach's organ music, that uh, some of it was included to, you know, to remind us of his tastes in music as well. That's my thinking. I'm not terribly sure. Or it was just bad planning. Um, apparently the Queen actually requested Elgar to be played at her funeral, and it was. The Elgar organ sonata was played as they left Westminster Abbey. Anyway, there you are. Useless information. Sorry, yes. Um, I'd been playing piano. I started playing piano very young, and I also started playing jazz piano very young. And this is where things start going in a certain direction. Um, as a young chap, my, um, ah, there you are, Graham answered the question. The Duke of Edinburgh requested it, the Queen duplicated it. Well, I think Charles duplicated it. I don't think the Queen had anything to say anymore. Um, um, yes, um, when I was, I don't know, maybe my mum can tell us. We bought one of those Yamaha electric organs or electronic organs, remember them? Sort of the home organs. We bought one of those and I was bopping about on that. I think this was absolutely great fun. And at some point around the age of, I have no idea, 13 or 14, or I don't know, I can't remember exactly when, we decided or I decided or somebody decided that it would be good if I took organ lessons. So I was thrown off to the cathedral in Inverness where the organist there, Russell Grant, asked me to play something. And I sat down at the organ, at the cathedral organ in Inverness. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't prepared. I thought he was going to teach me something, but he did. So I sat down and did this. I played the en no, leave the camera there tonight and I played the entertainer I played the entertainer and he came up while I was playing it and added stops and he was having a great time so we got off to a very good start okay because he could see I was open for all kinds of music that was absolutely fine and during that very first lesson he gave me a piece of music by Bach and I don't actually have the music it's uh, maybe Vanessa can find it online. The, the eight little preludes and fugues, remember them? And he gave me F major. Remember that one? remember how it goes on from there but it does all that kind of stuff yeah and then it repeats and I 
sight read that because it's easy, yeah? It's chords as a melody. That's all it does. You have a melody, you have chords, and you have a pedal line there. Easy. So I could play that, absolutely no problem at all. And then he gave me a fugue, a piece of counterpoint, and I had never in my life come across counterpoint, and this was it. Let's see if I can still play it. I played it a few months ago, and it kind of worked, but I can't remember, so let's find out. There you go, the Fugue in G minor, the first ever piece of counterpoint I played in my life. I think that took me a very long time to learn, and I basically learned it from memory, as I tend to do with all kinds of difficult music. Um, I keep it in my memory. Um, it's easier that way. And earlier this evening, I had a wonderful message from my friend Rien Schalkweig, and Rien is magnificent. 
Rin is a brilliant organist. He's a good friend and he's an absolutely amazing academic. Rin has studied everything in the world. He studied, I think he studied everything from farming to, to the weirdest, deepest, weirdest psychology and philosophical stuff and all that kind of stuff. But nowadays he works as a psychologist. And um, I was talking to Rin over the last few days and weeks about, the, you know, about this concert. This concert has been bugging my mind for months. And um, I spoke to, you know, I was speaking to Rin about it. And he said, ah, but don't forget, you can play jazz, you can do this, you can do all of those things. I said, yes, that's true, I can do all of those things. But this is still the kind of music that, that you know, uh, the old nail-biting starts with this kind of music. And, um, you know, we spoke about this for a while and we came to the conclusion, obviously, because I started out life as a melody with accompaniment kind of person. Yeah. So a simple melody and the accompaniment. My brain can do that. No problem at all. So even music like, I don't know, let's get the loud thing going. Even music. I don't even need the organ for this. But, you know, music like this from uh, uh, Vidor. <laughs> what I'm playing yeah I can do that automatically because my brain says ah there's a melody at the top there's a harmony underneath and there's a bass down there easy peasy and my brain can just do it and when I see it on the page I can almost sight read it it's you know it's my kind of music that's absolutely wonderful however this kind of music this kind of music is written that way it's written in lines that go from left to right obviously all music is written in lines from left to right but it's still very vertical. There's a melody and everything happens underneath that melody. This, however, has independent melodies and they're all sort of intertwined and they're all sort of moving in the same direction. Yeah. And my brain can't really cope with that. Certainly not at sight. I have to spend months learning this. And even then, I still don't have the individual lines in my mind. I've just got the sounds, if you know what I mean. I've still got the, there's the melody and there's the accompaniment. I've still got that going on in my mind all the time. Um, so things like, you know, this one. That's where my brain stops, yeah? Because then, there's, there's the me The melody's now here. But there's something else going on above it. And my brain's going, no, 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 hold on. Yeah? So that's the kind of stuff I have to do you know, I have to spend years learning it. Remember two years ago, maybe, or maybe even three years ago now, I started a series of videos. I'm going to learn the Passacaglia in C minor, 5-6-2. I'm going to learn the Passacaglia. And I did, I think I did two videos, maybe three videos on it. And I, I, I had to stop because my brain was going, I can't do this. I cannot do one movement of that every week. It's not going to work. This is going to take months. I could do one a month, maybe. So the whole piece would probably take two years to learn. I will do it. I will do it, but I need to reset my brain. And this is where Reen comes in. This is brilliant. This is where Reen comes in. Reen said, haha, my brain is wired as a homophonic musician. Melody, a chord, uh, chords underneath. Melody, harmony, bass. Easy. Jazz, basically. Yeah? And because my, my, my mind is wired that way, so it's sending signals to my hands and feet. It's very simple. My right hand takes care of the melody. My left hand takes care of the harmony. My feet take care of the bass. Perfect. And that's hardwired in my body. Yeah? And when I sit and do my jazzy stuff, I'm not even vaguely aware of what I'm doing. It's all happening automatically. Last night, the jazz concert, I was away with it. I was going mad last night. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not consciously doing what I'm doing. It's just happening. Yeah? My fingers are doing it automatically. This, however, oh my God, this is, this is short. No, this is different. This is like the, the, last, um, the last comment I got from Green was it's like a computer. Yeah? I've got my, my RAM. I've got all the jazz stuff stored in my RAM and I can just use it anytime at all. But this stuff here, this, this is the... 24 core processor that needs to work overtime all the time overclocking yeah and it's you know and my ram is still full of jazz stuff that's the problem i need to clear my ram of jazz stuff and fill the ram with counterpoint with this kind of stuff and um the question is the question is is that actually something that i should consider trying to do at my 
late stage in life? Is this something I should be able to do? Here's an example. Here is a homophonic piece of Bach's music. This is number 721 this time. Erbarm dich mein, o oh Herr Gott. A beautiful, beautiful choral prelude. Absolutely beautiful choral prelude. And this is sight readable because there's a melody, there's chords, and there's a bass. Watch this. Let me get something nice here. Let's have that. Let's have that. And let's have, well, let's have that. Yeah. Let's have... Actually, let's have that as well. Let's turn, let's turn the Groningen organ into, into a French Romantic organ. Listen to this. And this is, this is, I'm not going to say easy, but this is easier for me. So, Erbarm dich mein, O Herr Gott, number 721.
BWV721, Erbarm dich mein, oh Herr Gott. Now, interesting, I was concentrating on what I was doing at that point. It's rather interesting. Um, while I was playing that piece of music, I was reading the chords. There aren't any chords as such written there, but I was, for example, the second, the last line here. So I'm reading, right, that's a C sharp 7, that's an F minor. That's a D, that's a B minor 7, that's an E minor 9, that's an E minor with a 6 in the bass, that's a A7 with C sharp in the bass, that's a D chord, that's a B7, that's a B7, that's an E minor, that's a C chord, but it's used as a Neapolitan 6, taking us down to an F sharp major chord with a third in the bass, taking us here, blah, 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 and so on. I'm I'm doing the chords in my head. I'm not looking at the lines. I'm not saying, ah, no, the alto line goes from a G sharp to an A to an F sharp, and it just carries on going down. I'm not looking at the line. I'm looking that way. I'm not looking that way ahead. That's the problem. For example, if I was telling, if I had arranged this for my choir, then obviously I would have the alto line going to da 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 yeah, the alto line would be doing that. The tenor line would be doing then. That kind of thing, yeah? And you'd be looking at the lines, but I ain't doing that. I'm doing it that way. And that, what, that's what makes that piece of music considerably easier for me to play than the following piece of music, which for me is absolute, absolute, absolute hell on toast. And this is, this is a trio. This is a trio, and this is the kind, I've played this before on the channel. I've played it, and I, I, I've learned nothing new for tonight for the simple reason it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but this one, this one I've played before. It's the only trio I play um, for the simple reason it's the only one my brain will take before it just goes and implodes on itself. And it's a rather lovely, it's a beautiful piece of music. We all know it. Uh, what registration did I have earlier? I had a registration for this. It sounded so nice. I think it was... No, hold on. It was... What's that? Vanessa's playing rock and roll music in the background. She's playing with Instagram in the background. I'm doing all the work tonight and she's faffing about on Instagram. Go and make your husband a nice cup of tea, please. Yeah, I, make some tea. I would love a cup also, of tea. No, 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 no. Oh, God, no. Alcohol and Bach, absolutely not. For heaven's sake, no. That would be the most hilarious thing in the world. No, definitely not. How do I know I've tried it? Okay, then, Miss Kunischkurt, Entschuldigung. All right, all right. Vanessa's going to go and head to the kitchen and make her lovely husband a delicious cup of tea. Thank you, darling. That would be beautiful. Oh, yeah, take a couple of biscuits up as well. Yeah, let's, let's turn it into a comfortable, gemütlich evening concert. Oh, Christmas biscuits, speculatius, yeah. Oh, okay, so Vanessa is leaving the chat for a couple of minutes. She's going to go and get me a nice cup of tea. Yeah, I need comfort food for this kind of stuff here. Uh, oh, so, oh, Urza Mayo is the boss. All right, Urza, in English, yeah? Okay, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a trio. What does a trio mean? Well, it's quite simple. You have one line here, you have another line here, and you have another line here. Yeah? So my feet, oh, hold on, let me, can, I do, can I do this? Can I turn on my feet? Yes, I can. There we are. Look. So, so the feet have an independent line of music. The left hand has an independent line of music. And the right hand has an independent line of music. I hear you saying, yeah, but surely that's easy. Your right hand does something, your left hand does something, your feet do something. That's easy peasy. That's only three things to think about. When you're playing V-Dor, you've got ten notes, you've got all five fingers in both hands and two feet playing all at the same time. Surely that's more difficult. Wrong. Remember, it's the vertical principle versus the horizontal principle. And this is pure horizontal. There's one line moving forwards and the second line joins in and moves forwards as well. There's no harmony to think about. This is where things get really, really, really weird. It's a beautiful piece of music. This is BWV 645. It's coming up to the time of the right time of year for this as well. It's called Wachet auf, ruft uns die Stimme. Um, watch out, there's a voice shouting, which is maybe not, maybe not the way you would translate it properly, but that, that's basically, it's a watch out. That's the way I play it. Watch out, <laughs> watch out, the voice is coming. Um, yeah. And that's the way I sort of have to cope with it. So, let's see if I can play this halfway decently. It's a trio. Um, 
Towards the evening, you will see moisture gathering on the top of my head. Um, while I play this piece of music, I want you to think about 1980s British comic Kenny Everett. <laughs> Hold on, I had some I had some things wrong there. That's wrong. Is that gonna work? Yeah, that's gonna work.
Ha! Ah, and just as Vanessa uh, arrived back and changed the um, camera, it, the piece stopped. Let me pop that over here. Look, ladies and gentlemen, a small dish full of biscuits. Oh, yes. And a lovely cup of tea. <laughs> In my staggy mug. Is Ian here tonight? Ian? Um, I'm Ian Lavery. Is Ian Lavery here tonight? Ian Walker is here. All right. Well, Ian Walker is not from Dingwall. And Ian Lavery is also not from Dingwall, but he lives in Dingwall. And Dingwall's uh, football team, Ross County, have stags, the staggies. So um, I have a staggy cup. Also, because I'm frightfully posh and um, posh people shoot deer for a living. That's not true. I don't do that. I've never done that. Um, <laughs> but that's what we're supposed to do, apparently. Anyway. Ha! <sighs> Right, that was exhausting. And it wasn't right either. There were a few sort of bits and there was, a, it's, it's one of those things, my brain, yeah? I'm, I can see, Vanessa's coming back upstairs with a cup of tea and I go, oh, a cup of tea. And at that point, my brain goes, hold on, stop, whoop, 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 whoop. you're doing this, yeah? Now, if I was playing a jazz piece of music and Vanessa came in with a cup of tea, my brain would go, hey, cup of tea. My, my fingers would continue doing what they were doing anyway because I'm not paying any attention to what my fingers are doing. This, however, if I'm not paying 100% attention to what's going on, my fingers go, oh, 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 what am I supposed to do? Help, help, help. What am I supposed to do? And that's, that's my problem with this kind of music, yeah? Physically, I can do it, but mentally, oh my God. Here, have a book. Do I need that later? No, I definitely don't need that later. Uh, hier, steckt das auch mal kurz weg, bitte, weil das ist Gefühl. Hast du? Ja. Okay, danke. Look, ladies and gentlemen, biscuits. Ah, crumbly biscuits and an organ keyboard. I sense fun. Um, towards the end of this evening, I am going to, I'm going to sight read a piece of music from Bach. I'm going to sight read it. Um, hold on. Ah, I'm going to sight read a piece of music by Bach, and um, I've asked several people involved here, who I know well, um, and also I haven't asked, um, I haven't actually asked many organists, but I've asked some chums from the Gartrell gang if there's any piece of music they think I could sight read. Now, obviously, if I asked my chums, they would all say, ha ha, sight read. <laughs> that kind of thing. Or... Or even worse, that kind of stuff, yeah? Now, that is a piece of music that I'm learning for Christmas, okay? The jig. I'm learning it for Christmas and I'm memorizing it for Christmas because I want to be able to do the Virgil Fox thing, yeah? Where he goes... Where he does all the dancey bits, yeah? So I'm going to... I'm going to memorize that one for Christmas. So, but I asked a few other people if they had an idea, if I had an idea, uh, what I could do, sight read tonight. So, um, there's an email apparently going to gang at cultural DE. That's where it's being sent. Um, and, well, I'm excited to see what they're going to come up with. So we shall see. Now, if you're going to play a concert of Bach's organ music, there's one piece of music you must play. We have to. Number 565. The Toccata in Fugue in D minor. You have to play it. And funnily enough, carrying on with our psychological thing, this one isn't as difficult as you would think for the simple reason it's relatively homophonic. In other words, there's a melody and there are chords underneath. Ha 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 ha. Easy peasy. However, I'm going to play this twice tonight. I'm going to play the original version by, by whoever, but we think it might have been Johann Sebastian Bach. We don't know. We weren't there. None of us have invented time travel, so we don't know. Um, and then I'm going to play a different version of it. And this is a version of it I'm going to play for my friend Jerry Martin, who is currently learning that second version for a Halloween concert, believe it or not. Anyway, here's the original 565. Five. And maybe Vanessa will come and turn pages for me at one point. Mm -hmm. She says yes. Okay, here we go.
Doesn't that sound great on this organ? It's a wonderful instrument, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. Ah, time for a psychological rest from my brain. Um, that is a marvellous piece of music. Whoever wrote it, we don't care. It's wonderful, whatever. And um, everybody does their own version of it, basically. And when I say version of it, I don't mean different notes. and Obviously, mistakes, yes, but not the actual different notes itself. Um, but everyone sort of adds their own sort of flavour to it. Uh, oh, by the way, these biscuits are for dunking. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 Much better. Mm. Much better. Ah, sorry. Yes, I need. I need this kind of thing. It's good for the. Good for the. Good for the. Good for the mind. Mm. So, that was the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Now, later, towards the end of this evening's concert, we will be playing the Hammond organ version of that, which is great fun indeed. Now, hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Try it. Try it. A nice cup of tea. Proper, proper British tea. PG tips, tea bags, milk, and then dip biscuits in there. Hmm. The best biscuits at the moment for dipping into your tea, by the way, the best biscuits are IKEA ginger thins. The thin ginger biscuits you get at Christmas time in the red metal tin. And they're the best for dipping in your tea at the moment. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Sight reading. Mrs. Garcho was very naughty and put a piece of music at the organ. It's a very famous piece of music. It's something I've never played in my life before. And just looking at it, my brain's going, ha, 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 ha. But I know it. So that should help. Why does that help? It helps because I know the melody. I know what's going on in the background. The piece of music in question is, it should actually be played, be played by Terry Jones at the organ. Remember Terry Jones? Terry Jones was the Monty Python guy who sat at the organ and went. Yeah, that was Terry Jones. And he sat at the organ wearing just a bow tie. Maybe a G string, haha. -ha. And here we go. This is Bach's air on G string, not air on R G string or air on the G string. It's just air on G string. And it's actually from his orchestral suite number three in D. And this version's in C. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Okay, doesn't matter because I've never played it before, so that's fine. Um, actually, no, that will work because this organ is tuned so high it's going to sound almost like it's in D major. That's weird. That's psychologically correct in that, in that case. So the piece of music written in C should be in D. So you will hear it in almost D if you're tuned at 440. This organ's tuned at 466, which is very high. Right, what do we need for this? We need that with a tremulant. No, actually, we don't. We need, hold on, we need that with a tremulant. That's much better. And then we need to accompany it with something soft. So that will be that. Yep, that works. And something in the pedal to go bomb bomb with. Right. Okay. Air on G string mm. from Bach's orchestral suite number three. I don't have a BWV number for you for this. I'm sorry. I dare say one of the incredibly talented people in the chat this evening, one of the Gartrow gang members, will be able to tell us the BWV number of this actual piece of Muzak. So, right, here we go. Lots of octaves in the pedals. This is, this is actually the kind of music Gert van Hoof should be playing, isn't it? He does pedals and octaves. Um, so this is his kind of thing. Anyway, right, what keys am I doing here? That. Okay. Air on G string from Bach. Let's give it a go. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a message from the management. Um, people are asking for requests. 
<laughs> and people are asking for crazy requests like um, you know, yeah. the great G minor, the A minor, the D major, the C major, Toccata, Prelude and Fugue. Uh, Toccata and F, someone asked for, 540. <laughs> no, not from me. Uh, and certainly not tonight. Maybe in about 10 years' time. Yes, definitely. No, no, no. Um, none of that is sight readable, and those are pieces of music I've never learned before. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, 239 of you in the chat this evening, and 700 and something, 700, and, no, about 800 clicks already this evening. That's very good. Thank you very much indeed. Has Vanessa pointed you in the direction of your festival concert ticket, perhaps? Maybe you wish to help us out a little bit and buy us a ticket to say thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway, here we are, air on G-string. Sight read, sight reading, sight reading. No, awful, terrible, disgraceful. Sorry, no. What? Ah, no. <laughs> Hate it. No, no, not doing it. Not doing it. No. What? No, no, I just ignored the repeat. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. That is. I, the steam coming out of my shirt is frightening. Absolutely frightening. Good God. Oh. Let's have some fun instead. 
the Bach family. Bach family were enormous, absolutely enormous. Bach himself came from a very large family. If you sort of follow the Bach family tree, there are millions of them. And um, Johann Sebastian Bach himself, with his, thanks to his two wives, um, he fathered 18 children that we know of. And not all of them survived into adulthood, of course, as was as well tried, Steve Caddy, exactly well tried and not well executed. Um, uh, but yeah, of those 18 children, not all of them survived into um, adulthood. And a number of them themselves became musicians or artists in general. Um, and some of them became very famous, um, very famous um, musicians in their own right. And they, they, did, they buggered off all around the world. None of them hung around with Daddy Johan. Absolutely none of them. And, um, and um, the most famous uh, accounts of family life in the Bach household were presented to us by his son, C.P.E. Bach, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach, who um, reported of his father's shall we say, less than pleasant attitude in life. Let's just put it like that. Let's leave it like that. Um, not the happiest of families, apparently, but a wonderful musician. Um, people who had to work with Bach were scared of him. They were absolutely petrified of him. Um, he, would regularly, um, he would regularly be quite, quite rude, quite evil, quite violent sometimes towards fellow musicians. Um, various accounts of him throwing things at, uh, throwing instruments at players when they weren't playing according to his um, perfection, shall we say. And uh, yeah, so despite all this amazing music, this amazing talent, um, deep down, not necessarily the nicest of chaps. Shame, shame really, but I suppose artists. <coughs> now, one of Bach's lesser known sons um, we're not quite sure. We think it's maybe even one of C.P.E. Bach's sons. We're not very sure indeed. The dates of this person are rather sort of weird. Um, born in 1807, died in 1742. Um, it would appear that this member of the Bach family lived backwards. Um, and not C.P.E. Bach uh, and not J.C. Bach, but this one is P.D.Q. Bach. And... Um, P.D.Q. Bach was a very, 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 um, very important member of the Bach family and um, very, um, very ahead of his time, shall we say. And like J.S. Bach, um, P.D.Q. Bach also wrote a series of preludes and fugues for um, a tuning system on a keyboard instrument. So J.S. had for the well-tempered piano or clavier or whatever it was called, for the well-tempered keyboard. Not equal temperament, but well-tempered. And um, P.D. Kubach wrote um, a series of preludes and fugues for the short-tempered clavier, which is much better. Um, preludes and fugues in all the major and minor keys except for the really hard ones. And then um, the number is Schickel 3.14159, easy as. Anyway, I've dug out a couple of these because I think they're incredibly funny indeed. And um, let's start actually with the prelude in C major, which works on the organ rather nicely. It should, of course, be played on an organ. Uh, sh sorry, it should be played on a piano, but it works rather nicely on an organ. That's the way around I wanted to say it. And uh, you might recognize some interesting, some interesting um, harmonies going on in the background. <laughs> then was the C major prelude. How about the D major fugue? This is much nicer.
Isn't that cute? A beautiful, simple D major fugue. Very easy to read, very easy to play. Now, earlier today, <laughs> earlier today, I had a request from our friend Joe Humans. Uh, is Joe here tonight? Yes. Joe here? Joe, of course Joe's here tonight. And Joe requested this piece of music. And so on and so on and so on. The uh, Liszt Prelude and Fugue on B A C H. And I rather, I rather, I rather kindly said to Joe, forget it. Uh, that's a kind of piece of music that needs to be practiced and practiced and practiced. I've never played it, never played it. Um, but that's definitely something I would do at some point because it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of music. However, for Joe, I managed to find this, and this is the B flat um, fugue that ends the series of uh, preludes and fugues from P. D. Q. Bach, and it's the fugue in B flat on the subject B A C H. It is that weird. It is that weird indeed. Crazy stuff indeed. PDQ Bach, a fun look at the music of what might have been. That was, of course, a mad, um, wonderful American uh, musicologist, Mr. Schickerle, who came up with those ideas. And they are absolutely wonderful. I think you will agree. Oh, apparently we have, we have something ready. I promised you a different piece of music in the toccata and fugue style, and this is it. This is a uh, swinging Bach, it's called, and it's absolutely wonderful. And this is, I'm dedicating this to Jerry, because Jerry's going to be playing it as well. And um, it's a sort of a, it's a funny, jazzy, bluesy, actually, well, swinging, obviously, version of the toccata and fugue in D minor, question mark, I think that's rather cute, arranged by Porter Heaps and Lloyd Norlin. What a wonderful name, Lloyd Norlin. He's, he definitely sold washing machines in a former life as well. Lloyd Norlin. Hello, I'm Lloyd Norlin. Anyway, and Lloyd Norlin and Porter Heaps arranged this wonderful thing, and it should be played on a Hammond organ with drums in the background, so it's supposed to be kept very strict rhythm. However, let's see what we can do with that. I'm going to start it, I think there. Anyway, let's see what we can get off with here. Swinging back. Why am I looking at swell pedals? This organ doesn't have any swell divisions. 
force of habit. My RAM is programmed to do that. I just realized playing through that this organ only goes to not even there it only goes to there and all these notes here don't do anything ah my tiny brain forgot that so i had to <laughs> i was trying to modulate uh, 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 transpose while i was playing that at the same time sorry about that yes those chords at the end are absolutely wonderful let's do them again <laughs> let's do them again because they're so good those wonderful chords hold on listen to i'm going to do the end again because i missed that up
That's better. <laughs> it's supposed to go all the way up to there, but uh, there's no note to do it. Fun, isn't it? That's the porter heaps. Kind of the porter heaps. That wasn't exactly as porter heaps would. Yes, yes, yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, slowly but surely we have to come toward the end of this dueling ordeal for me and we have a winner. Okay. We have a winner. What book is it in? Um, I don't know. Oh, hold on. We need the book with the individual pieces. Not that one. That one. Okay, we have a winner. A piece of music for Fraser to sight read. No, that's a trio sonata. That's definitely wrong. Is it in here? Is it, is it even in here? It's not even in here, is it? Ah, yes, it is. Right. Oh, God. All right, then. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know, I sort of know this one from, oh, it's long, it's so long. Do you really want this? Okay, well, I said I would do it, so let's do it. <clears throat> okay, this is where things get difficult. Um, um, earlier this evening, or as we were running up to this evening, like I said, I requested, I requested, uh, I requested a request. Um, a piece of music that you think I could possibly sight read, but it mustn't be too difficult. It mustn't be one of the preludes and fugues, because they're impossible. It mustn't be something like the Passacaglia. It mustn't be a trio sonata or the Toccata and F, nothing like that. But any of, the, any of the other big pieces I said I could have a go at. And some rotten swine out there chose this one. So I suppose it's my own fault. This is the pièce d'orgue. The organ piece, basically, um, Orgelstück, BWV 572. And now it's in three parts, I know it, because uh, I've heard it, and it's, it's long. Oh my God, this, the middle bit goes on forever. The middle bit's hell, I can tell you that right now. Um, oh yeah, and then it ends with that weird, oh God. Although I think that repeats, it, kind of repeats itself. Oh my God. Okay, well, you asked for it. You asked for it, so let's give it a go. Um, we need to set up the organ. How are we going to do that? We need something cute for the beginning. How about that? Is that cute or how about this? Nah, let's do that. That's nice. That's nice, we can do that. Let's have that at the beginning. Right, and then we need some big nonsense on here. So let's have, actually let's not have, ah, I know, let's do that with mixtures, but let's have that coupled. Um, is that gonna work? We need a 16 foot. Yeah, that'll do. And then, oh God, I've got 10 pages now. So, Vanessa, ich brauch dich zum Blättern. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then this bit at the end. Is, is this bit loud at the end? I'm not sure, this bit. God! Okay. Is that loud, that bit at the end? I think it is, isn't it? I think it is. We'll maybe add to that then at that point. I will add, I will add, uh, no, I've got, no, I won't. Yes, I'll maybe add a 16 foot to that, okay. Oh my God, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is sight reading. May the force be with you, Fraser. Yes, thank you, camera. Yes, play it as loud as you can. Reen, that's a very good idea. A very good idea indeed. Um, and oh, you're talking about all sorts of things. Play one in Gypsy Jazz style. Joe, that's such a good idea. I think I'll do that to finish off. Um, is that permitted? It's a, it, it is a Bach concert, but am I allowed to play something jazzy at the end just so that my brain can go, oh, yeah? Right, first the work and then the, yeah, whatever. Oh my God. There'll be beads of sweat and a pool on the floor. There already is, there already is. I'm gonna have to get a mop in here at some point. 
Okay, sight reading. This will not be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It won't even be close to perfect, but I like a challenge. Here we go.
Oh, no. Whew. Oh, my God. Okay, that's... Um, that's it's, it's, oh, uh, I have no idea what that is. That's just a mess, isn't it? God. What is that supposed to be, even? What was he thinking, Mr. Bach, when he wrote that? I have no idea what he was thinking. The middle bit's actually not as bad as I thought it was. That's counterpoint hell. How many voices? One, two, three, four, five voices. Five voices, each doing individual things there. Um, forget it. The first bit, diddle diddle dum, diddle diddle dum, that's quite cute. I like that. that. That's quite easy. But that middle bit's pretty hell. There's so much going on, and I've, I've no idea what's going on. It's all individual lines doing their thing. I, I can't follow them. And that, at the end, I've no idea what that's supposed to be. That's just noise. That was weird, man. That was weird. That was seriously weird. Do I have any other registrations loaded up on this organ? Yeah, I do. Um, actually, well, I, know what, I know what we'll do. Give me my book, please, of um, organ works. Mm hmm it's that one. It's Bach jetzt vorbei, oder was? Oh, God, yeah. Jetzt ist Bach vorbei. Yeah, but uh, Bach is... I am absolutely soaked through this. Fuma. Fuma. Uh, also, der Rede hat gesagt, du musst morgen einen Kurzschnitzel bekommen. Oh, yes, please. Schnitzel. Dann habe ich zu ihm gesagt, als ob du nicht jeden Tag schöne Dinge zu essen bekommst, dass man das auch annimmt. Yeah, check that out. I get lovely things to eat every day, but no, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think, yes, you're right. I think I need something seriously. Um... Seriously cool. Actually, let's close this evening. Well, no, we're not close it. Let's let's get towards the end of this evening with a piece of music that I composed using Bach's themes. Now I wrote this for a guy called Martin. This is part of my new Fraser Gartrow's organ works, and it does Fraser Gartrow's organ works. Um, and I, I called this one Modus Confluentes. What organ did I record this on? Uh. What organ did I record? I forgot. Oh, it's here. It's written here. Modus confluentes. We record a non C. Right. Well, sod this. We're changing the organ to non C cathedral. Oh, sorry, folks. Bear with me. That one. Oh, I am exhausted. Absolutely exhausted. Ladies and gentlemen, if. If you have been enjoying our uh, organ festival so far, then please consider helping us out by buying, um, buying a festival concert ticket on the way past. If you have already, thank you very much indeed. Um, if you are considering buying another one, we won't say no. Thank you. But um, if you've been enjoying yourself this evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've, you've been enjoying yourself more than I have. So um, if nothing else, to, um, to let me know that you appreciate the bizarre amount of work I had to do this evening. God. My eye is, my eyelid is flickering. That's how much work I've had to do this. Yeah. My, I, you know when you get that sort of nervous thing in your eye? Yeah, I've got that. Um, all right, Nancy's loading in the background. That's fine. Um, yeah, th this is what the music of Bach does to me. This is, this, this was, I'm well outside my comfort zone this evening. Definitely miles outside my comfort zone. And um, I won't be doing this again in the near future. Absolutely not. Definitely not. This is kind of also a bit of a sort of psychological experiment for me. You know, can I actually do an entire concert of this kind of music? Um, if you, you know, if you give me Louis Vier, Charles Marie Vidor, Maurice de Rouflet even, and you put those things in front of me and said, here, play a concert of that and sight read that, I would be happy. I, I, would, I would actually be happy. I would sit and I'd say, yeah, this is great. I love it. That's not very good, but hey, come on, let's give it a go. And, you know, I'd be much happier doing that kind of thing. Really, a lot happier doing that kind of thing. And this, God, I'm exhausted. I really am absolutely exhausted. My brain is empty. Yeah, Adam Schuster sagt, Bach composed it only for you, Fraser. Who said that? Oh, Joachim Schuster is there. Hello, Joachim. Wie geht's dir? Lange nicht gesehen. Schön, dass du da bist. Jawohl. Ach, wir haben Joachim Schuster seit ewig nicht gesehen. Geht's dir gut? Lange nicht gehört. Schön, dass du da bist. Was hat er gesagt? Bach hat's extra für mich geschrieben. Ja. Oh, nee, hat er nicht. <lacht> Oder äh, wo hat er das gesagt? Habe ich nicht gesehen. Ah, oh, somewhere, somewhere earlier. All right. Ah, oh, my goodness me. Bach composed it only for you, Fraser. Bach composed it only for me, Fraser. <lacht> No, he didn't. He definitely didn't. Right, how are we doing here? 82%, 83%. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Uh, 
it's flickering so much I'm losing eyelashes. There you are. Anyway, Gesundheit. Oh, Vanessa sneezing in the background as well. We're going, we're going. Ha! Oh, exhaustion. Anyway, back to this piece of music that I'm about to play. Um, yeah, this was a piece of music I composed for Martin as part of the Fraser Gartrell Organ Works selection. And... Uh, Is it even in here? Yes, it's this one. Yep, it's that one. Yep, it's definitely that. Okay, now, um, Martin's, Martin's theme was take, take themes from Bach fugues and put them together in a piece of music um, in an arabesque style. Yeah, now that's pretty specific, as you might imagine. What did I do there? That pretty specific stuff. So I took the themes, th I took this one from the C major fugue. I also took my old fugue. And I also took, he said, I can't remember now. Oh, yes. I also took that. And I sort of interwove those themes in basically a trio sonata. <laughs> so here's me busy saying I can't play trio sonatas, but I obviously did because I, I composed one. Um, and it's in a sort of French style. So the harmonies are more sort of French. Oh, God, can I even play this? Oh, that's a good lesson. Yes, that was not, that really wasn't any fun for me tonight, folks, but never mind. Thank you so much for being part of it tonight. Let's see if I can play this. Vanessa, I need you to turn pages, please. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, here we go. I called this modus confluentes. Confluentes, because everything's flowing together. Oh, what a clever boy I am. Anyway, let's see if we can play this.
Modus confluentes, something along those lines. Sort of a couple of ideas thrown in there to, um, to um, get the taste buds going, as it were. Ah, oh, good heavens me. Right, I'm dead. Let's finish off this evening's concert with an interesting little piece of fun music. Just for fun, I think we'll have... What selection of goodies shall we have tonight? Let's have... Oh, I have no idea. Let's have... What shall we have? Oh, let's have those registrations. Let's have those registrations. We're on a French organ, so let's have some French registrations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finish off this evening's performance with a simple <sighs> number for me. A sort of a... A sort of an organy, bluesy sort of idea, just to close things off. Tomorrow is the second last concert of our festival. Do we have a festival photo for the people, Mrs. G? Yes, we do. Vanessa, Vanessa's busy Instagramming in the background. I can see. Oh, she's doing. Something. Oh, it's even worse. It's Facebook. We're not on Facebook. I know we don't. So why are you reading? All right. And here we go. Festival picture. Click. Uh, tonight was the Bach Bonanza, and my God, am I glad that's over. <laughs> Tomorrow night is going to be something very exciting. We are going to do a silent film night, which means I'm going to dig out an old silent film, and I am going to accompany it with a theatre organ, a cinema organ, just like the good old days of silent films in massive cinema. So we're going to have a silent film night. I do hope you will join us for that. It's definitely good fun something to sit back and relax doing. It's, um, it's good fun for me as well, because it's just all improvised. I get to watch the film, I get to follow along the action, and I get to improvise tunes to it all at the same time. And then, ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday night, it's our closing concert, where I will be wrapping everything up and uh, seeing, what we can, seeing what we can put together for the final concert. A bit of everything you've heard so far. A bit of, maybe even a bit of Bach again. I don't know yet. Maybe even a bit of Bach. We shall see. Um, we shall see. Uh, and then wrapping everything up. Oh, there we are. The picture's gone. Thank you. Um, bit of jazz, bit of film music, bit of, bit of everything, really. So, a night at the organ. So, I hope you enjoyed our Bach bonanza this evening. I sort of did in a funny sort of way. I didn't think I was going to, but I think I did. So let's finish off with a piece of music in a completely different style. See what you think of this. <laughs>
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, an evening of hell and absolute terror. But I hope you enjoyed it. So I look forward to see you tomorrow night for something a lot easier, certainly for me. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for your thumbs up on the way past. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And thank you also for your concert tickets. You're a very, very generous gang. Thank you very much, folks. See you tomorrow. Night, night. Thank you.